The 2016 Yukon XL Denali can seat nine, haul over 121 cubic feet of cargo and tow nearly 8,000 pounds. At over six feet tall and nearly 19 feet long, it's one of the largest vehicles on the road, likely one of the toughest too, a true three row body on frame truck. But despite all that, these burly behemoths are afflicted by a thorn in the paw that might have you considering the competition. Hi, I'm Mike Perkins from CarGurus, and this is a story about mistakes in manufacturing. So enough mystery. Let's take it for a ride and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not sure if you can notice this through the camera, but there's an annoying amount of pressure booming that's happening inside the cabin here at anything between 35 and 60 miles per hour. It's like if you opened up one of your front windows but hadn't cracked any of the rears to relieve the pressure. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's that what, 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 what you get that, that hurts your eardrums. Now, I tried a lot of different things to fix this. Uh, opening rear windows, cracking the sunroof. I even tried turning on the cabin air reset just in case the pressure was coming in the vents and couldn't escape. But it didn't help. You're driving down the road, all the windows closed, and it's still happening. So I did a little research, and it turns out I'm not the only one, not by a long shot. And the problem is thin sheet metal in the roof that comes unbonded from the support bows, which causes it to flex at speed and then aggressively fluctuate cabin air pressure. Now, GM is aware of this. They've issued information and service bulletins for it, and they claim it's a production issue that was fixed by the end of 2015. And to be fair, it doesn't affect every single big GM truck out there, but it could affect any of them. So that means your Tahoes, your Suburbans, even your Escalades and your big pickup trucks like the Silverados and the Sierras. So make sure that you test drive before you sign on the dotted line. Because for me, it's bad enough that it actually makes me a little queasy, so it's best to be vigilant. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the good things that the Yukon XL Denali has to offer. For 2016, GM is up to the processing power of their IntelliLink system, which means it's faster to respond to inputs. It's noticeable and very welcome, especially for navigation and radio station scrolling. The station information comes up nearly immediately now, and that means less time with eyes away from the road. You also get Apple CarPlay, which is an even better option, just mirroring your phone on the screen. Plus, the Yukon now gets added safety in the form of available lane keep assist and auto high beams, and the liftgate on SLT models now gets standard hands-free power. Personally, I find the default settings for all the sensors, the forward collision, the lane keep, the rear cross traffic, and the blind spot monitoring to be just far too sensitive. They're always being set off by something, especially driving in the city. So that just means that my seat is always vibrating, alerting me that I'm too close to something out there. But with a truck this big, especially driving in the city, it's definitely a welcome annoyance. But a better idea? Just don't drive it in the city. Now, when I first started driving the Denali, I was shocked by the $80,000 plus sticker price, but competitors in the near luxury large truck category are similarly priced, so that's more a critique of the segment than of the Denali in particular. And for that money, you are getting a lot of truck and a lot of features, even if you don't go for the top tier Denali trim. At the base SLE level, for around 52 grand, you're going to get front and rear parking sensors, auto headlights and wipers, blind spot alert, remote ignition, a rear view camera, a Bose stereo, and seating for nine. Hop up into the SLT for 60,000, and you'll add forward collision alert and lane departure warning with lane keep assist, that vibrating seat I mentioned, plus rear cross traffic alert, power folding mirrors, and keyless ignition and entry. You also get wireless phone charging, but just like in most of the cars I've tested, 
The charging tray isn't big enough for the phones that actually have wireless charging, so it's pretty useless. Now when you opt for the XL version, you'll be ready for towing with a 2-inch receiver and a 7-pin harness, but for true functionality here, go for the HD trailering package. That'll get you lower gearing, a trailer brake controller, plus an air suspension. Now the top tier Denali trim comes with the trailer brake controller standard, plus a magneto rheological suspension that honestly isn't doing enough to control the shakes and shimmies that I'm getting both around town and at speed. I'm actually getting some pogoing around the highway and that's not helping with the pressure situation at all. Now I've seen some speculation that this is due to the stiffened frame and body mounts that were intended to prevent rollover, but they're really just hurting the ride. What else do you get with the Denali? Well, take a look from the outside and you'll see a unique grille, xenon headlights, and these optional 22-inch aluminum wheels with chrome centers and inserts. Standard wheels are 20-inch, and these upgrades add $2,500 to the ticket. Inside, you'll notice a special reconfigurable digital instrument panel, navigation, an upgraded 10-speaker Bose system, and second-row captain's chairs. But my favorite is the active noise cancellation and the extra insulation you get here. Accepting the pressure booming situation, this is one of the quietest cars that I've tested on the highway. That said, the real Denali upgrade is the engine. Sort of. Regular Yukons get a 5.3 liter V8, good for 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. But the Denali boasts a 6.2 liter V8, delivering 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. And while both engines come with a six-speed automatic transmission and a locking rear differential regardless of choosing rear or four-wheel drive, the Denali's tow rating is curiously lower than the regular Yukon, despite the extra power. The difference is only a couple of hundred pounds, but it still doesn't really make any sense. Now what really impresses me here, believe it or not, is the mileage. The Denali 6.2 liter V8 is rated at 14 city miles per gallon and 20 highway for a combined rating of 16. And that's exactly what I'm getting. Actually, I've even been able to best that without really trying on a couple of different 100 mile test loops. And I can't remember the last time I was able to say that about a car that I've tested. The only frustration I have with the drivetrain is that at highway speeds, the cylinder deactivation drops the V8 down to four running cylinders, and that's great for gas mileage, but when you want to pass and you mash the gas, there's a long pause before you really start to accelerate, and that's frustrating in a car that can do zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. But what really bothers me are the options. This version is fitted with power retractable running boards, a, a sunroof, adaptive cruise, a theft deterrent system, and a rear entertainment system. But these are all optional. Even omitting the 22-inch wheels for $2,500, something I'd probably do for ride comfort alone, you're still talking about $7,000 in options nearly 10% of the Denali's price for features that really should be included at this level. So what does all this mean? Well first, don't judge the Yukon too harshly for this pressure issue. Hopefully GM will get a handle on it, and with the information and service bulletins that they've already issued, it sure looks like they're trying. Plus, if you test drive before you buy, you can make sure that you don't get one of the affected examples. Still, I'd take a look at competitors like the Expedition EL and the Toyota Sequoia. They both drive better and frankly have more accessible cargo areas, which are pretty important features for a large, near-luxury SUV. Still, in this rather sparse segment, the Yukon XL Denali, it manages to deliver. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more car reviews, and if you want to know more about the 2016 GMC Yukon XL Denali, just click the link in the description. You can head over to cargurus.com and read my full review.